My name is Rick and welcome to part six of the Mean.io tutorial. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to go into production with our Mean application. So in order for me to actually make this happen, I can't really go on the server and show you, you know, step by step, you know, what file I edited, how I edited it, and when I did uh, all these things. But here's pretty much a quick guide on how to do this. You wanna go back to tutorial part one and follow this on your production server. So this includes installing Node.js, NPM, you don't need the Clyde tools, but setting up the same configurations with Apache, setting up a, uh, the proxy, uh, package and also creating your um, your comp file so you need to go ahead and do this before uh, you know before you actually go on to the production site and the reason why I mentioned that is because my production server it's Ubuntu 14.4 using all these uh, different types of technologies and I wanted to do a SSL uh, certificate on the application not because necessarily I need it but uh, because I feel like that would be a really cool thing to do with a node.js application so the first step to do this is really simple. You have to clone the repository into the server, CD into the directory, do an npm install and a bower install. Then after you do that, you want to go ahead and set up your uh, your your configurations, which are two different files: is the all JS and the production .js. And you do this by simply edit, doing a couple changes here. So what you want to do is you probably want to do a different port because I'm running Ghost on port 3000. That's a different node application. And this application is going to be running uh, HTTP traffic on 3280. And it's going to be running secure traffic on 3281. And pretty much you just tell it what your keys are, your certs are, and then you right here you want to say uh, your session secret. You want to go ahead and generate a session secret for your application. Also, where it says uh, secure, you want to say true for your session cookies. So these are stored over HTTPS. And same thing here for the blog. You also want to do your uh, username and password and client ID and key. And these, all these are is just from the Ghost application that my code uses. Same thing with Mailer. You want to go ahead and put in your mailing uh, authentication here. Obviously, I don't want to Put, put this on a public repository so you guys use those for malicious things. So it's really important that you do this on the server once you have your server up and running. So now the next thing to do is to set up your Apache configuration. And you do this by simply creating a new comp file. And in that comp file, this is what it's going to look like. And what we're saying here is pretty much redirect uh, norick.com to https norick.com. This way, uh, all the traffic gets automatically sent to an HTTPS call. So everybody will be re redirected back to norick.com over port 443, which then sends them over to port 3281 for our node application. And that pretty much does it for uh, for this part. And then the other thing we need to cover is how to create an init D script for a Node.js application. Because we don't want one necessarily, uh, you know, run grunt and then uh, and then close our shell and then suddenly your application dies or um, you know this type of thing so you kind of have to create this thing called an init d script if you guys don't know what it is it's just pretty much a a way that linux manages your application to start and stop and there's many things in between so you can actually set it up to do like a reset or suspend. There's many different um, uh, functionality that it has. But for mine, I just wanted to keep it really simple. And where you find this, you actually find this in this location here. And what I did is I went ahead and copied it. Then I went and vimmed into it. And this is what it kind of turns out here. What I actually went and ended up going with. And as you can see, pretty much all I'm doing is I'm getting the, the Node.js path. I'm going to the full path and the file name, which you can find up here your node path will be here and your file name would be server.js so pretty much all you do is you run this and then after you run that make sure you log this out to var logs and then with the program name as well so that's pretty straightforward as far as that once you do have this uh configured um and saved to your uh init dot into your etsy init um folder you just want to go ahead and just hit start no rick or whatever you named your comp file and then if you want to stop it you just do stop no rick and that's 
kind of how you would do that part. And then the last part for this would be a uh, separation of concerns with source code. And the reason why I mentioned this is because you don't want to necessarily publish your uh, production, you know, credentials, email, this type of thing. You see it over and over in GitHub and it's a really, really, really big issue. So what you want to do is you want to actually remove this from the repository, these two files, which is the all in production. And what you want to do is you, once you remove them, you want to put them into your git ignore um, so git can stop tracking them. Once you've went ahead and removed them and want to go ahead and commit that, push that off to the branch. And then you want to go ahead and stop the service and start the service again. So this way we can actually pull and use our GitHub repository to, you know, do any feature changes or find and fix any bugs and then push directly onto the server and our code will be automatically deployed instead of trying to, you know, go in there every time, mess around with these files and whatnot. You just pretty much have your production settings, you have your development settings and you're good to go. Now the last part for this project is, um, to actually start using the demo application, right? Because the my whole idea here was to create this goals application where it would allow me to track my goals and kind of figure out if I'm being accountable for them or not. And uh, I'm going to be going into the application, you know, through probably today and tomorrow and a couple of days in the future and just kind of input all my goals, kind of see where I want to go for 2015 and figure out that whole entire um data input into the application. So um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and give you a little demo now of the actual application on the live server. So if you guys are actually watching this video, you can go right to this blog post, click on this link, and this will take you right to the application itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And as you can see, we got redirected to an HTTPS call here, and all that traffic's going through that uh, 443 port. And we have norig.com, and we have this, and pretty much right now there's really nothing on here because I just, barely launched the application so it's it's on the production server now and all the pages are being served as you would expect the about I'm still working on it right now and the blog obviously still has those demo ones that I created in the previous video and the contact form is ready to go as well so that's it for the application um, I'll be doing another video kind of about what it takes to do to work with a node application and you know why you should do it or why you shouldn't do it but for this example it was super easy to do uh, relatively quickly uh, I started this application back in December uh, I think 22 23 around there and I went ahead and finished it now which we're at you know January 11th 2015 so I didn't work on this every single day type of deal I just kind of worked on it uh, when I had free time and when I wasn't working that type of deal uh, and one of the cool things about working with me is that you can quickly get up and going um, not necessarily knowing all the intricates of the system as uh, you would say uh, for example if you were to do this application like in Rails or in Java Play or in you know Laravel it will relatively take you a little bit longer to do that especially because uh, those frameworks are really, um, they give you a lot of power as far as how you want to handle your data, your application business logic, and where and how you manage to create the application. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found it useful. Um, make sure you stay tuned because I'll be releasing a video that would go along with norick.com and all my goals and even, you know, writing a bunch of different blog posts, which which I'm really excited to get started doing that. And I feel like this tool is going to really empower me to get those goals completed. So until next time.